A couple days ago, a document leaked from Mr. Beast Production Company titled, How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. And since Jimmy's main YouTube channel has more subscribers and gets more views than every other channel on this platform, it's being looked at by a lot of people as a cheat sheet for how to make it on YouTube. And it is in some ways. He talks about how to make clickbait titles and thumbnails and then how to effectively deliver on said clickbait in order to have good audience retention and keep people coming back for more. And there's plenty of screenshots from the back end of his creator studio that prove his metrics really are better than just about everyone else on this platform. But beyond this guide having good advice for making viral videos, I would say that there's actually some really useful stuff in here for running any kind of startup business. And I know that there's been a lot of controversy around Mr. Beast. There's actually some things in this guide here that made me think if I was reading this as a potential employee of Mr. Beast, then I would probably start looking for work elsewhere. But nonetheless, I still think that there is some good advice in here if you were to go and start your own business. So the first thing that stood out to me was right here in this section, what is your goal here? And Mr. Beast makes it very clear that the goal of his company is to make the best YouTube videos possible. Not the best produced videos or the funniest or the best looking videos, but the best YouTube videos measured on the metrics of click-through rate, average view duration, and average view percentage, and a couple other metrics that you can get from YouTube. Now, if we abstract away from making viral videos and we talk about just having a specific goal in mind for your business, this is something that so many startup companies lose sight of when they start going through periods of extreme growth and especially when they start to reach that phase where they're more of a corporation with separate departments and people start getting too buried in the details of their department and their own little component of the bigger project that doesn't even matter so much as far as the company's goal is concerned. And Part of the reason for this is most employees in big companies have no idea what the key performance indicators are for the business. The, the actual things that make the company money and make them more successful. And granted, the KPIs in YouTube are very straightforward because you can get detailed statistics for your YouTube videos in the creator dashboard. But making sure that everyone in a company knows what the KPIs are, maybe not what the exact metrics are, but at least what they should be striving for is such an important principle that startups miss. And I would imagine that there's some people that have been hired at Mr. Beast Productions over the years who had experience working on movies and other kinds of film pieces. Um, in fact, I know that because right below the what is your goal here section, he says that he doesn't care how traditional media does things. Uh, because again, the key performance indicators for a Hollywood movie or a documentary are gonna be different, right? They're different things for what you, than what you need for winning the YouTube algorithm. Now, another point in this document that's maybe a little more contentious is Mr. Beast saying that he only wants A players in his company. He only wants the people who are obsessive and learn from mistakes, are coachable, intelligent, don't make excuses, believe in YouTube, basically the people who have the same vision that he does. Now, obviously, any CEO, anyone who's gonna be hiring wants to have everybody who has the same vision as him, right? Who's gonna be as obsessed and working as hard as, uh, as him or her. Um, but a lot of businesses don't just avoid doing that, but they end up hiring way too many people that are really in no way or you kind of have to stretch a bit to see how they are essential to the goal of the company. It could be too many HR people, or it could be having these elaborate amenities that were so common at tech startups for, I guess, to get people to hang around the office more, you know, like they have a little game center set up and, you know, 
coffee machines and these elaborate kitchens and then you end up having employees to maintain that stuff or contractors you know either way you're spending a lot of money on it at the very least and we've seen time and time again where businesses will invest in all of this stuff when they're profitable but then when the profits go down there's mass layoffs there's lots of resentment from people keeping your team lean and avoiding bloat is key and that's pretty much the summary of this section here with Mr. B saying that he only wants A players. And another point that's made in this section and throughout this document is accountability and the necessity for different departments to communicate with one another in order to reach deadlines. This is something that I think everyone has run into at some point where projects can end up in this deadlock state because you need something from one department which needs something from another and so on and somewhere down the line often at multiple points in this dependency chain you find that the only cross department communication for a specific issue was one email or one phone call and then no follow-up. The person just shot off the email, said, hey, I need this thing and now I'm not gonna worry about it until Bob delivers. Mr. Beast recommends that his employees find the people that their work progress depends on and tell them that they are the bottleneck. They are the reason why stuff is not getting done and follow up until their work is done and their work is done correctly so that you can continue with doing your work. It sounds like there's a lot of micromanagement going on, but I would imagine that the logistics for creating the kinds of videos he does on his main channel as often as he does warrants some of it. Now, there's two parts in this document that outline work expectations that probably confirm some of the rumors that we've heard about how strenuous working for this company can be. And that's this section titled, Nothing Comes Before Your Prios, which is short for priorities. And a little bit below that, we have this section called, Work on Multiple Videos Every Day. And it actually ends with saying that if you only ever work on one video throughout a day, then you failed as a Mr. Beast employee for that day. So I would imagine that Doing these two at the same time can get really difficult to sort out when things are really busy because, you know, there's this demand for high performance and high work output, and that's common in a lot of tech startups. You know, we've all seen job listings for the rock star developer, and the only thing that they end up having in common with actual rock stars is sleepless nights, um, but theirs are spent working instead of being buried in drugs and groupies. So Jimmy has explained multiple times in both interviews and also throughout this document that the YouTube channel is his baby. He obsessed for years over having the most success ever on this platform. He spent thousands of hours just studying viral videos, studying how to win the algorithm, every nitty gritty little detail of a video and you know what made it pop. And his work has obviously paid off. He's made a lot of money. He's built up a huge reputation for his brand. He might be one of the most recognizable people on the planet. And at the end of the day, this is all his. It's his company, his obsession made him a lot of money, let him give away a lot of money, and ultimately let him live his dream. And it's a big ask to want everyone on your team to have that same level of obsession. Again, from the CEO's perspective, this is what every CEO would want, but you'd imagine that maybe it's a little bit more difficult for people who are editors for a YouTube channel to really share that same level of obsession. And that's pretty much what this guide is asking for in a nutshell. So hopefully the people that are doing that work and that have to be that obsessed are at least well compensated and enjoying it for the most part. I'm gonna leave a link to this entire document in this video's description. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.